Thank you very much. So my name's Adam Saul. Um, so I work for Team Tony Kestrels at the moment. I've got a little bit about my pathway in a minute, which I'll kind of touch on uh, briefly. Um, but thank you very much, Coach Jackson, as well, for his presentation just then. Here he is. Um, really like the, the bit about culture is actually ever evolving, isn't it? Um, and that's very much the same with some of the messaging. So hopefully, as I said, we're coming more from an elite standpoint. But the way players receive information and kind of gain insight from a scouting or from a learning perspective, that is ever evolving as well. For like year on year, every group kind of um, receives the information in a different way. So I've got a little question here. So how do you know um, if your scout has been successful? Obviously, you'll all be talking around scouting and how we deliver the information at Solent, more from, as I said, more from that elite level. So in the plan for session, I'm just going to go a brief overview of our kind of approach at Solent um, and kind of how we build our week in terms of um, the scout and the, and the delivery to our players. Obviously, traditionally, teams always give sort of a paper scout, so written information about kind of what, what are most important things. And also, I'm going to talk about the content. So what do we also give our players in order to reinforce some of those messaging? Um, so, you know, the typical thing is a video scout, but we've started to use some aspects of social media as well to try and be creative in our approach to deliver that information. So the promise is just kind of a brief overview of kind of my history, just so you get a little bit of understanding of where I'm coming from. So 2014 was kind of my first experience in, into performance analysis, um, and that is, that is my role, um, along when I was an assistant coach. So I did sport and exercise science at university, and that kind of really gathered my interest in, in the area. I've got some really good opportunities coming out of um, university, working with the England Talent Pathway, so working with the under-17s as a performance analysis with Guy Calls at that point. And then I progressed to the under-15s with um, Chris Boyner, Chris Bourne and Troy Cully as well. So that's kind of my introduction into kind of a national team pathway. 2017, I wanted to be a bit, take it a bit more seriously in terms of performance analysis and in increase my understanding in the area. So I decided to do a master's um, at the University of Chichester. And this is kind of where my journey with Solent has began, or began. So with, with the course that I did with the master's, I had to do um, a placement position. So I had some connections to Matt Guyman, um, who, he, he wanted to do his presentation with me today, but he can't, unfortunately. Um, and reached out to him to see if there's any opportunities with Silent Kestrel. So my role is specifically with the first team, so in the National League Division 1 setup, um, and I've been with the team since 2017, so for five seasons now. So it was very much a placement opportunity. I got an opportunity to attend the Great Britain men's um, camp in 2019, so it was part of the pre-qualifiers for the European Championships. Luckily, so, well, not luckily for that individual, but they, they couldn't attend, so I was kind of filling in the gap, essentially. Um, but luckily, I've managed to stay involved with the, with the program since um, as a role of a performance analysis. Um, so it's very different to what we do in terms of what we deliver at Solent to what we do at the international level. But obviously, it's been an incredible experience to be part of that group. And obviously, we had some really good success qualifying for the Eurobasket. And then 2021, so more recently, I've kind of changed profession. So I'm now teach um, at university and um, with part of that we, we kind of have to do some academic research as well so I'm very sort of focused on the academic research side of things now you know what is the determinant of success um, and I kind of want to work my way towards a PhD essentially so that's kind of like my end goal you all know your basketball guys you go above and beyond for the love of the game I've kind of done the same thing so all of these opportunities that I've done has been along kind of like my full-time job roles so in terms of my experiences, I've had a range and I've been very lucky with some experiences that I had. But if you think 2017, doing a master's, working a placement with Solent, I was with the under 15s at that point, and I had a full time job and a two year old. So <laughs> it's very key that actually you do take time for yourself, and I feel a little bit burnt out five years on, but that's another, that's another issue. For those who don't know, we've had an incredible amount of success at Solent. I'm not saying what, what we've been able to do from a scouting perspective as, as kind of is the sole reason for that. So I had a lot of success before I came along. But for me, the main things for us that we did well was our regular season success. So we've won the league four years in a row now. To have that sustained consistency within a season, but also year on year, I think is an incredible achievement for us. But also our BBL trophy to be able to compete at the highest level as well with the group that we had. And scouting was a key focus within that group. Um, in order to achieve and kind of beat some BBL teams along the way. So for us, preparation is key. So the way that we prepare um, and the way that Matt approaches the game as well as head coach is very important to us. We understand 
at teamwork. Obviously, you can win games as teamwork, but to have that consistency throughout the year and season on season, I think for us, and I interpret intelligence as game planning, but getting our players in the best situation possible, being prepared for what's in front of them. Okay? So that's kind of how I take that quote. And for us, and Mark talked about it this morning as well, it's, it's about fine margins. How can we make the opposition un uncomfortable? And how can we put our players in the best position possible year on year, game on game? So we'll just revisit this question, and hopefully some of you do some element of, of scouting within your roles. But does anybody have any aspects or things that they look at um, to kind of tie that process up? And how do you know if your scout has been successful? Just throw it out to the room if anybody's got anything. Results, so whether you, whether you win any end of the game, that's a good, it's a very good judgment, yeah, so you don't win, and, but potentially, you know, your scout may be effective, but you've potentially scouted for the wrong areas, potentially if you lose. Yes, yeah. and measure success criteria. Perfect, yeah, so measure success criteria, and obviously it's down to you guys to kind of think about what that may be in, in, in that given situation. Anything else? Holding players under their averages. Yep, so measurable outcomes as well, perfect, yep, so you may have some outcomes in terms of focusing on, on key players. For us, we look at it in two different ways. Um, it's, it's an area that we don't, we should really focus on a little bit more to close that gap. You know, are we being effective in the scouting? Obviously, we've had incredible success, but actually, our execution, do we get it right most of the time? So me and Matt came up with this sort of definition for us. So it's this collective game plan. So for us, it's, is everybody on the same page? Are they rotating correctly? Um, are they closing out to a certain player correctly? Our adjustment in the, in the post or whatever it is that we're looking at. Everybody needs to be on that same page. Okay? We need to be prepared, and I kind of touched on that on, on the last slide. But also, you know, we've got our game plan. We've got what we want to try and achieve. But what we don't want to do is restrict our players in terms of playing instinctively. Okay, so a good example in the final recently. One of our players shot the gap in, in a passing lane, got still transition score. That wasn't necessarily what we kind of said we were going to do. Um, OJ hedged, hedged the ball screen and disrupted that play. You know, it's fine margins. So we, we issue our game plan to our players, but we don't want to remove them in terms of playing instinctively or that kind of match. It's, it's, a, it's a really fine balance. You want to be prepared, but ultimately they're players. They're really good players to a high standard, so you want to allow them a certain amount of freedom um, within their roles. But as looking at a game, this effective huddles, and Jackson talked about it as well within culture as well, we give them the game plan in sort of solution-based um, in terms of how we approach our scout. But actually, we want them to be able to, and this builds on to instinctively as well, we want them to have um, constructive huddles in a game. So that we want them to come together, okay, this happened, this possession, I didn't close out uh, a certain way, we need to solve that going forward. We don't want them to be relying on us, to give them the solutions all the time. And this, as I said, kind of builds on this um, instinctively aspect. We do have, so going back to measurable outcomes, we do have themes. So we tend to have kind of common themes. How we measure them depends on, on what team that we're playing and our, and, our, and our game plan, essentially. But our themes, we try and keep consistent. So obviously, we, we are a good defensive team and we have been throughout the seasons. So it may be a defensive focus, maybe high tempo, whatever that is, and then we'd have some statistics that kind of relate to that. We try and bring it alive, like we had this on the whiteboard um, at half time, so I'd come up at half time, write how we're getting on in certain stats, and I feel that that kind of has a little bit of impact for the players as well, um, so they can see how they're getting on in certain aspects. We bring it alive by a match report at the end. One of my lockdown hobbies was to learn some computer programming. So I've written a program which runs a report at the end, and we have our measurable outcomes based on our themes. So whether it's limiting personnel to a certain, a certain level, um, playing at a high tempo, and obviously how we measure, measure that is quite subjective, um, and then rebounding as well. So we would have stats relating to it, but we want to keep um, our theming consistent throughout the year because we're trying to build on, on that culture element um, and Matt's philosophy that he's trying to bring a life year on year. We appreciate there's, there's two sides to the coin when you come to scouting. There's the offensive side, so how can we be the best team that we can possibly be? How can we take advantage of certain matchups, um, some certain coverage situations? So from a scouting approach, we may just want to focus on the offense. How can we be the best team possible on the offensive end? Or actually, the other side of the coin is how can we limit the opposition? How can we blow up their actions or half-court sets, whatever that may be? There, of course, is the balance between the two. 
So the offense and defense, and I think that's where we try and sit with our game plan. So we condense our game plan down to eight key points, four on offense, four on defense. Okay, so we try and have that balance between the two. Ultimately for us, our offense is driven by our defense. So um, defense is very important to us in terms of our planning. So when we approach our scouting, obviously we, you know, it's nothing groundbreaking here in terms of our approach, but we want to try and get the DNA of a certain team. So we're trying to work out what makes them tick when they're at their best in terms of being successful, what does that look like for that team? We come across it in terms of two different ways, again, offense, defense. And we feel that teams on the offensive end kind of fit into one of three categories. They might be solely you know, half-court sets to gain their advantage. Okay, we've seen a bit of a shift towards these two other cogs in a minute. Um, but ultimately, we could be looking to blow up some half-court sets. We put them on the floor, um, that kind of thing. But actually, when you think about half-court sets, when you kind of drill them down, there's a lot of um, sort of false movement in order to get to a common action. So a coach may just have actually, we've got all this action going on ahead, but actually we're just going to focus, we want to get the ball in the post. So actually, moving our messaging away from trying to blow up half-court sets, trying to issue 15 sets that we, we expect our players to learn, which we wouldn't, we can boil it down to actually how we're going to guard certain actions, and then hopefully, if we blow up those actions, knowing that they're going to be in some sort of um, framework, then hopefully we're going to be successful. The other focus, so we could look at it more from a common actions, or we could look at it from a player tendency standpoint. So ultimately, they may rely on a couple of players in order to be successful. So we kind of tailor our game plan to one of these areas. Sometimes it's a combination of these two. We would focus and, and tailor our game plan either on how we're going to guard certain actions, or how are we going to limit key players keep them down to a certain point, and then hopefully make the other players on the team try and beat us, essentially. So there's different ways we can approach it from the offensive end, but also from the defensive end as well. And these two goals are really down to kind of a coach's philosophy and how they set up their team. So they may want to provide certain team change-up, so thinking quite simply, like what zones we might be expected to see, um, any, any half-court press to try and um, disrupt the rhythm of the game, and then general coverages, you know, how, how they're likely to guard certain situations, how can we um, adapt in order to try and um, provide solutions for those. So these are really down to kind of the opposition coach's philosophy, and that's kind of the DNA and kind of what we're trying to get to. And really the gold kind of key and, and kind of the other thing, side of things is the chess match. So what are they going to do based on your personnel? What are they going to try and do to disrupt your individual team? So what adjustments are they going to put in um, in order to try and beat you. And we really, I think this is kind of key, really. I mean, we've got general coverages that we would work on throughout the year um, through our solutions on the on-court delivery about how we're going to um, attack an ice coverage or whatever it may be. But actually trying to work out what the opposition are going to do based on previous trends, um, that's where I think we've managed to be successful. And then we can adapt based on what we're going to see. So whether it would be, you know, uh, a defender is going to start sagging off one of our players, He's got an advantage in the post, so let's stick him in the post. Okay. So we, we can try and, we don't always get it right, but we can try and um, kind of see and kind of um, look at what the opposition are potentially going to do for us. All of this, along with kind of a statistic side, which obviously it's a whole other um, lecture or session, um, all of this kind of boils down, as I said, down to our four key points on our game plan. And this is kind of the information we'd then um, deliver to our players. So we've got all of this information, and this is our job as a coaching staff to boil that down into some key messaging for the players to what are we actually going to do um, going forward for the match in order to be successful. So this is our week. We're very similar to other Division One programs, I assume, in terms of we have two sessions, two structured team sessions a week. Um, so obviously that limits in terms of what we can do, in terms of the amount of information that we give the players, and also practicing on, on court. Our sessions are classroom sessions before the start of training and then move on to the, on the court to work on certain aspects. So Tuesday is very focused on what's happened at the weekend just gone. So you know, what, what are the key trends from the weekend? What can we work on to be a better team moving forward? One thing I would highlight is for us, because we want to be very time efficient as possible, we try and look forward to what we're going to see at the weekend. So if it is, for example, a switch in defence and we didn't do a good job of attacking that, then actually... We would, we would include that in our review session based on the opposition that we've just played. 
So there may be some video clips to, to kind of talk through and see what we would do better. The players wouldn't know. It's focused around moving forward, but it's just a way that we can be a little bit more efficient going forward. Thursday and about a Wednesday point, our shift, our focus tends to shift to the opposition. So we've kind of um, done our review of the game that's just happened, and we're now going to focus on our um, game at the weekend. So again, we present the scout, whether it be the paper or the video, um, in a classroom session. And then what we do on the court, we're very lucky. Obviously, we're, we're attached to Solent University, and they have like a, a, a TV screen on the court that we can wheel around. So we can try and be a bit more efficient in our classroom sessions and then show the players on the court certain actions so they can see it happening in real time, the opposition um, happening in real time, and we can put that on the floor in terms of our solutions. And then pre-game, we have a morning walkthrough. We, we go through our game plan an hour and a half before, then 30 minutes before the game, we may go through any out of bounds or anything that's more important to us. One thing we started to do towards the end of the season was provide half-time feedback as well. So obviously, we, as, as Matt, as a head coach, we did feedback to the players. But actually, if there's something that we've seen on the court, whether it be a new half-court set we haven't scouted for, an action that's really hurting us, whatever that would be, we would show that one clip um, at half-time. We're not precious about it. If it's not going to add value, we're not going to show it. But just one or two clips um, to kind of re-emphasize the points that Matt, Matt is making has been kind of um, a real pivotal change for us towards the end of the season, season as well. Players really like it because they can see it. Obviously, it's one thing Matt talking about it at half-time, but actually when the players see it, um, they can make the adjustments as, as they need to. So really, when, when we talk about scouting for us, there's a whole range of different information that we give the players in terms of delivery of the information. And you know, today we're just going to focus on these two aspects, and I'm going to kind of just whiz through the paper scout, which is kind of the, the traditional thing that most players expect to see, um, essentially. So we haven't really changed it much in the last um, sort of two to three seasons, as in my first two to three seasons. We added some stats, we added the notes sections for the players to to make their own notes. Um, but our biggest change came um, before the BBL trophy final. And you know, me and Matt always sort of catch up and think about ways that we could do things differently. And we decided to take this more of an approach and we added it onto our scout initially for this game, is this idea of, of our collective game plan. So going back to our four key messaging of our game plan of both sides of the, of the court. So we look at how we can attack them. So what are the types of um, situations that we are gonna be successful but also the, from the other side, what can we expect them to do? And what are our solutions for that? We carried that forward. But traditionally, when you look at paper scouts, we're very descriptive. This player likes to do this. He's very good at this. But actually, we've now moved to more of a solution-based. So we, the players don't need the description. They just, for us, they need to know what are we going to do to limit them in a certain situation. So we've moved away from this very descriptive side of things to be more solution-based. Okay, ball to encourage, this is what we're going to do. Okay? I'm not going to go through the specifics of what we include in the paper scout, um, but I've done... So essentially, we move from a paper, and I've written a program, I've written a, a web application for our players that houses all the scout information. So if you scan this QR code, it will take you to our website um, where we ho house all of our scout. So we've... We're lucky enough to kind of, as I said, remove it from a PDF format that we just send out on a WhatsApp um, to now a website which has um, our scouts and things. So I don't think there's any signal down here, but you take a, take a shot of that for later. Um, and it, it's at the end as well. So feel free to have a look at some of the language that we use for our players. Um, it is a scout on us and the coaching staff, so it is fictitious. Um, so bear that in mind. I'm not a very good shooter, even though it says I am. Um, but you can just have a look at kind of how, how we do it. So I wanted to provide some feedback um, from our players. So I asked them kind of, did we get the right balance in terms of the amount of text that is in our, in our paper scout? A lot of them thought it was about right or they could do with more, which is probably they want that descriptive element back because that's what they're used to, is, is my interpretation of that potentially. And there's a couple of players that thought it was, it was still a little bit too much information. They couldn't quite comprehend the game plan. So us as coaches, we haven't done, done a very good job um, from a paper scout uh, standpoint in trying to deliver that information so everybody is on that same page. There's a quote there from one of our players, and, and we understand that some of our players will digest the information from a written form, 
but actually from in the form of a video or different ways that we can try and be creative in terms of delivering the information to players um, is key and, and is, is on us to adapt. So Travis loves to read, so we know he's going to read the paper scout, um, and Dads is one of the best defensive players in the league as well. Um, so we know they're going to read the paper scout, but actually we need to make sure that we hit all those other learners in terms of how players learn and, and take in information. We need to make sure that we um, can provide the information for them. So myself and Matt, we, we had a goal this year to have the paper scout onto one page, and we kind of abandoned that just to throw it on a website instead. But actually moving forward for us, we're probably going to move away from a, from a paper scout. So that traditional information, kind of written paper scout, we are probably going to move away from that. Okay? The app has its own benefits. We have our terminology on there. The players can access statistics and everything like that. So it's still going to be there, I think, for the players to access, but we're not going to have any focus on it. So we feel that we can deliver the information in a, in a more efficient ways. For us, we see the paper scout as our, as a coaching group, we see it as our way to kind of come together, and this is where it pulls the information from an Excel sheet. So we've got a shared Excel sheet, a database of all of the teams in our league, all the players in the league, how we're going to guard them in certain situations. It's a live document we can all update throughout the week when we're watching the footage. But for us, the focus now with the paper scout is for us to work out our game plan, our coverages. It's not as a tool to deliver the information to the players. So we're going to kind of, I think, move away from using that paper delivery um, for that information. Adam, I asked why, like, you just said that you two players read, like, read it, because uh, I'm actually going, I'm actually going different, I'm actually going back to a paper scout, I've yeah. only done a video for two years, because, yeah. because players, like, learn different ways, like, to read it, like, I'm sorry, we're doing both, this is really interesting that you're flipping the other way, after you've just also said that you play, like, Travis, really likes to read it. Why are you going to get rid of it? So I don't know if I made that point clear, but it's going to be there. We're just not going to focus on it, say, in a classroom session for delivery. So in terms of expectation on players, and, you know, have you read that paper scout? We're not going to ask them. We're not going to control it in that way. Does that make sense? So it's going to be there for those learners. Well, the paper scout is on your website, so for them to see that. Yeah, yeah, so it's three tabs, our home information, our statistics and scout. So it's still going to be there. The emphasis for us on the coaching staff when the expectation is the players aren't going to read it. If they do, fantastic. But if they don't, it's, it's down to us to deliver it in different ways, on the court and through the video, which we're going to touch on in a second. Thank you. The pre question. Um, so one of the issues that we've had this year yeah. is um, like we have set week bits very similar to you. Um, but we have some players who love as much information as possible. Yeah. And then we have other players who you can't get to buy into the scout for a lot more money. So how do you maximise the usage of it in the independent time away from us? That's probably going to be the players that don't engage with the paper. That's going to be my next section um, in terms of being creative. And it's about building relationship with players as well. So with Dad um, and Trav and some of the other players in, in the past, as a, as a performance analysis, I'd build that relationship with them. I would give them additional information just on the side essentially, so if, if we feel it's going to add value to them, then we would do it kind of separately and work with them in terms of how, how they want that information. But yeah, for the players that don't engage with, with the Paper Scout and kind of want to read the information, that's going to kind of be where we've, where we've gone and our focus going forward. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. yeah I'll well, hopefully we'll do yeah. in about 10 minutes. Cool, perfect. But yeah, feel free to grab me for any other questions. What's, what's in that Excel sheet? I know it's just like a database of players, but what is it made up of? If you have a look at the um, application, so this is essentially the app pulls all the information from an Excel sheet, a database. So basically this says what is our key for the game, how are we going to measure it? And then as you go across on our, on our spreadsheet, it says, okay, full screen coverage for this player is going to be this. But obviously with, with most players, it's two to three actions that you're likely to see them in, whether it's a post-touch and maybe they're likely to roll on a ball screen, whatever that may be. So for the players, there's probably only a couple of kind of coverages. And then if you have a look at the app, we, we focus on the impact of the game as well. So how are we going to impact the game and how can we limit that with our solutions? Yes. Uh, can you give us direction on the way you're not practicing before the game? Uh, I believe uh, practicing before the game makes more in terms of the picking of the players and you know, in terms of learning the scouting more efficient than you know, having to skip 24 hours before the game and doing everything. Um, do you mean going back to this week? Tuesday or Thursday, then your game day is on Saturday. This is a limitation of, of the program. So we our training sessions are Tuesday, Thursday. 
It's not a limitation, sorry, it's, it's our structure. Does he affect your scouting your, your, in terms of players' performance? Why no, no, and, and, and I think we'll see in a minute. We, we give them information and drip feed it all the way through the week. So by Friday our evening, and we'll come on to it in a minute, they will have had every, every bit of information they need. So we drip feed it throughout the, throughout the week. And obviously we still have dialogue with them. And there's different ways on a Friday that we, we engage them. So we issue, some weeks we issue a quiz, um, like a really quick quiz. There's 10 questions, you know, this player, how we guard and guard, guard him in, in this situation. And then we try and keep it light-hearted and we throw in like a funny question in, in there as well. Um, and players really engage with that. Wouldn't do that every week, but that's kind of how we would we'll do it. But this is kind of more of a, this is our structure. We don't have any flexibility within this, within our programme. Cool. So, how... So, final things to consider, and I'll just kind of breeze through these. We've, we've talked about them. What's the best way to give the information to the players? Are we giving them too much information that they just can't comprehend and therefore it's, it's counter-intuitive? Counter One other thing that we've had incredible success with in terms of engagement is getting the players involved with the solutions. So in terms of like how we're going to guard a really good player in the post, well actually why don't we ask the players how, how they want to guard it? Okay? And we've had some really good engagement with the players. They no lo longer have to learn the coverage, they've come up with the coverage themselves. Okay, so we've tried to do different things within our classroom setting to try and engage them in that process. So can they contribute to the player? You know, we've asked them to send them, send them as notes before, before the game. So try and engage them in that process, um, and we've tried to do that, and we've done it in the, in the playoff final as well. So you know, we're not precious about our scout. We want our players to kind of get involved with it. So going back to the other side of things, so actually, so if paper scout isn't the best way for us to give the information to the majority of players, well, actually, how, what is the best way? And kind of, as I, as I kind of alluded to just then, we have, we, we drip feed the information throughout the week, okay? So players have access to a YouTube channel with all of our games so they can review them. We um, put to the top of a list the opposition's last couple of games or the last time we played them. I'm going to touch on TikTok, but this is kind of a thread throughout the week where we deliver more information to our players. Thursday is our day that we give them all the, um, the majority of the information, so the app's updated. That's kind of a deadline for us as coaches. We want that kind of make sure we have a game plan then. And the video scout, the full version, is released on the Thursday. That said, we, we do tailor in some, some quizzes as well. Um, you know, the players do, do enjoy that, and I think it's helped by having, as I said, a couple of funny questions in there just to keep it a little bit more lighthearted. So we started off when we first started looking at um, video scouts. We did the traditional theme, had a video on, teams, on team concepts, had a video on player concepts. It's 15, 18 minutes. That's, that's far, far too much information. Are the players going to get the relevant points for watching 15, 16 minutes of video? Probably, probably not, to be honest. So we tried to then start putting bits of more information um, on slides, so before player clips. And this is why we feel we can get kind of drop the paper scout, because then this is how we guarded Matt Ward Hibbert back then. Um, so this is kind of the key information for that player. So as I said, in terms of getting rid of our player scout, we can have the information on the slides and players can kind of view that. Throughout the, throughout the years, we've kind of tried to tailor the video as much as possible. This year, I've kind of given myself a goal to get it under five minutes. Okay, so the best way to do that is, say for example, half court sets. I wouldn't show every wrinkle of every half court set. Just show it once. The players just need to get a general feel for how they move as a team. Okay, so for us, five minutes on a video scout for everything. Okay, and this is player and team, whatever that focus may be for that, for that um, team. So we kind of get it down um, as much as possible in terms of the information. And as I said, we try and use slides creatively in terms of providing that written content, but making sure the key messaging is there. In terms of the clips that we show the players, um, so what's actually in the video scout, so the first game, we play a team, we would focus on their DNA. So going back to those key cogs that we had about you know, what, what common actions are we likely to see? Is it more of a player focus? And kind of what can we expect from those certain players? So very drilling down on kind of their DNA. Second time, we would shift the video clips to more about positive reinforcement of things that we've done well in execution of our game plan the last time we played the team. Okay. So, you know, we, we don't want to show negative clips all the time. We want to try and keep it positive. If the players see it working, they're going to engage with it again. So the third time, 
Um, second time, sorry, we'll, we'll hopefully provide clips, um, assuming that they are clips, of the last time that we played that team. Obviously, we have, we have multiple cup competitions and playoffs coming up. The third time, and this is where kind of the next step has kind of come into it, is we want to try and mix it up a little bit. And I'll, I'll come to this point at the end. We, we kind of want to keep it evolving every, every time we play a team. We don't want to keep it the same information uh, delivered in the same way. And for us, um, TikTok was, was the way that we delivered the information and the key messaging um, to the players. We expect our players to up their game in playoffs um, or finals or whatever it is, and we should do the same as coaches as well. So we decided actually TikTok might be a good way to start delivering that information to players. I can't take um, the full credit for, I got the idea of using TikTok from Lucas. Um, he did a, a workshop. Um, he worked at DePaul in the States. He did a workshop and said, well, actually, Let's think about creative ways. Um, and he gave it as a concept. So why don't you try TikTok? And I thought, oh, hang on a minute, let's, let's give it a go. So got the idea kind of came from this um, seminar I watched. So you think about how young people, if you coach young people today, kind of consume information. It's very quick, bite-sized information. You kind of got this scrolling thing now. And I've done it with the Johnny Depp trial recently. You kind of see what's happening in the morning to scroll through TikTok. So that's kind of how players kind of consume information nowadays so we wanted to try and tap into that information for us it's not about delivering new information it's about reinforcing the points that we've already delivered in different ways throughout the week so we would use the same clips that is in the full edit of our video scout so our five minute video scout we would use the same video clips and hopefully they will act as triggers rather than providing them additional information that they're not going to see in the video scout so they don't then have to watch the five minute video scout, they can just quickly scroll through TikTok um, and have a look. Is it pure just for your team? Or is this shared to everyone in the world? No, just for our team. You can have, you can have private profiles um, and restrict it, so. Jack, Jack loves this, but he's talking about your TikTok. I think the main thing is well to have, have fun with it, and this is kind of the point to the start as well, is you know, how are you getting your message across to, the, to your players? Who is your group that you're working with? and how do they consume information? And for us, we thought TikTok was, was kind of the way to go. And we did this just before the playoff um, started. So for us, it was a way for us to step up our game and the players to think, oh, actually, they're doing something new here. I've got to try and engage with that process. First week we did it, players came running to me when, when I got to um, Hemel, it was at the end of the season, and they, they loved it. They thought it was, was brilliant, um, and that's kind of reinforced with some of the quotes that I've kind of pulled out. In terms of what we delivered, in terms of what was in the TikTok, TikTok content, and I've never created TikToks before in my life, it's quite interesting to see what you can actually do with them. On the Wednesday, as I said, sh attention shifts um, towards the opposition. So I'll just do a quick screenshot of me scrolling through our statistics and kind of just highlight some key points. So during the playoffs, Hemel were, re were really, really good at, at sharing the ball in terms of uh, statistics. So high assist rate, you know, a bit of messaging there to, get to reinforce, you know, what is the team about? Um, in terms of their DNA. The Thursday, we'll provide a bit more scout detail. And what I didn't mention is we tailor our order of the scout based on the opposition. So if their defense is going to have the most impactful um, moments within the game, we would deliver the defense first in terms of a, in terms of a video scout. So whatever the focus is for that team, um, we would deliver that on TikTok for the players just to access um, on the Thursday. On a Friday, we'd do the flip side. So we did offense, we'd do the defense on a Thursday. And Friday, I thought it was really good just to have any other information. So any other um, ATOs that they would run that really create an advantage for the team, anything that was kind of really um, could swing momentum of the game, we kind of delivered that on the Friday. So I said, by the Friday, they've now got all the information. They've got the video scout that was released on the Thursday. They could scroll through their TikTok. And again, all of these are just 20 second clips um, of the information. So this is one of the videos, so um, we were playing a, a team in our league, and this was kind of one of the things that we felt we could take advantage of. It's got to match with your game plan, so this is just a, a little example of, of one of our TikToks. Cut it, cut it. Them bricks is way too high, you need to cut it. So again, defensive themes, and then just try and find some text, just trying to find, uh, trying to add some additional information. But does anybody hear the music as well? Yeah. So again, it's just trying to like trying to have a light touch, light touch, and appreciate it's going to be different at different levels. This isn't going to potentially work at the international level. 
but actually when you're working with kids at college or whatever it may be, this is actually could be quite engaging. They could actually really like um, looking through that information. So that's just one example. Is, you know, you can have some fun with it. Um, make sure your key messaging is, is the same with, with kind of the messages that you're trying to deliver with the wider context of your scout. Um, and that's just kind of one example. And as I said, the players loved it in terms of um, a delivery method for the information. I mean, this sentence here from one of our players, bite-sized information that's stuck, I mean, that's, that's gold dust really, isn't it? Kind of the fact that it's easy for them to digest and to access, and that information stuck as well. I mean, that's, that's gold dust, that's kind of what we wanted to try and achieve from it. <laughs> easy to access and made it more enjoyable as well. We don't want to, we don't want to give them a paper scout that they have to read, you know, they, you know they're not going to engage and, and get that information. So again, a bit more enjoyable. So again, just, just two quotes. A bit, but ultimately our players loved it. The information got through to them in terms of our game plan and delivery. Execution is another, is another side of a coin, but in terms of delivery of information, I think we kind of hit the point with that. So in terms of things to consider, as I mentioned, your messaging has to be consistent. This is really key. Like you are not, if you're using TikTok, for example, do not put the full video scout as a five minute TikTok. I mean, you can't, I think the limit's three minutes or something. But the point of it is bite-sized information. So I found 20 seconds to be kind of the top. I didn't do any, any kind of uh, testing on that, but I got bored watching a clip after 20 seconds, so that was kind of my, my ballpark. So two clips, under 20 seconds, got to get your message across um, as clear as possible. As I said, be, be creative with the information that you, you're kind of gonna deliver. Maybe it'll be using shorthand, like an emoji of a duck I used for a duck in. Um, or whether it's a poll at the end, so you know, ask the players a question at the end of a TikTok and, and see whether they get that question right, so a bit of engagement with that as well. Um, so keep it light touch, again, you don't want it to go be like a paper scout in terms of like a chore for the players to read. And actually what I found, we, we kind of rushed to using TikTok and, and Matt is very good in, in trusting me in, in what I do, but actually that probably wasn't the best platform for us delivering the, the information. In, in the poll that I did for our players, they actually all use Instagram. So actually probably Instagram is a better platform to use. So understand your players and kind of what social media platforms they're on. Um, obviously you potentially have private Twitter accounts maybe. Um, but make sure, you know, TikTok probably wasn't the best way for us to deliver that information. It was to, as a method, but not as a, as a correct platform. So be, be flexible within that. As I, said, I think the main thing that in terms of us being successful throughout our time and, and throughout the number of seasons is our players cannot get away from the scout and the information that, that we deliver to them. It's drip fed throughout the week, from the Wednesday, from the TikToks appearing on their timeline, um, to the on-court delivery on the Thursday, and even sort of walk through on, on game day as well. So they can't really get away from the information, and we try to think about how we deliver that information. Some players might, as I said, have, have the paper scout. Some players may get the information from TikTok, um, so whatever that method of delivery is. So some key kind of messaging. Uh, we move, I said the benefit for us was moving away from being descriptive and hope that the players come up with the solutions themselves. Provide those solutions for your players. Um, be very prescriptive on how you want to guard things. Less is more. We got it wrong this year. We gave them too much information at the start of the season. Get it right first and you, you can build on it over time, over the course of the season. A team at the start of the season is very different come playoff. Playoff for our teams we can throw a lot of information at them. Okay, start of the season, you can't. So just think about that, less, less is sometimes more. And even just talking about closeouts, how am I gonna close out that player? That's, that's gonna help you in rotations and everything like that, so less is more in that situation. And again, if, if you're using TikTok, think about the delivery of information to your players. Is writing and PDF format the correct format? Or can you get your message in, in a simple format, less is more in a different, more innovative and creative way? So every group is different. I touched on this quite a lot. Year on year, every group is different. Throughout the season, a group evolves. Change in variety is good. So TikTok every week, players might get bored of it halfway through the season, potentially. So keep it in your back pocket for halfway through the season or when you feel the momentum is kind of dropping. For us, it was the playoffs this year. Um, so I'm not saying change everything week on week, but maybe split up your sections of the seasons in, into a couple of months, potentially. Players switch off if it's the same delivery in the classroom. Um, we haven't touched on the classroom, but we do different things um, every week in the classroom. And one final thing is it get help as well. I work at a university. There's 100 students that require placement opportunities. 
You know, it might be just filming your matches, making sure all the players have access to it, helping you with some admin if you stick with a paper scout. You know, there's, there's lots of people out there that, that kind of need placement opportunities. So reach out to your local institutions in your area, see if there's any opportunity to get involved. So my course that I teach on, I have 100 students at the moment looking for placements. Not all in PA, but you know, there is potential there. I appreciate not everybody has someone like myself um, who dedicates their time to the scout and delivery of, of that information. So, and I appreciate, you know, it's a balance as a coach. So, you know, get help and you can build on that throughout the year. Matt took a good chance on me seven years ago and I feel like we're in a, in a fairly good position. So just final four, and then this, this obviously takes to the website as well. Um, I apologise, I feel like I've rambled at you for probably far too long. Apologise, it's a hot room. Um, if we have time for questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. I will be floating around all day, so um, just grab me if you have any questions as well. Um, as I said, have, have a look at our paper scout in terms of the information, but I said really think about how you are going to engage your players in terms of the information that you're going to give them. It doesn't have to be scout, could be the review content that you give them, whatever it is that is. So thank you very much for your time and patience, um, and I hope you found it useful. <laughs>